Good afternoon and welcome to JJ Isaacson Field at Seymour Smith Park. It's opening day for the Corn Belt League. My name is Jaden Taylor alongside me, Max Coglin. We got the corn out here. You are celebrating the corn out here for this summer ball action. We got a great matchup to start off this season. The reigning CBL champions, the Filth Ballers, taking on the Omaha Black Sox. Payoff pitch as Layden looks for a second strikeout of the day. That one driven into center field as Tanner Black will have to run and diving oh. play. Tanner Black, how do you do? Runs straight in from center field, dives and makes the play. And a big first out here in the third. 0-0 pitch. That one driven into left center field. Another diving play out there and left by James Grease. Back-to-back -back innings. We see incredible plays by this Bombers outfield. And once again, Zane Layden has to just tip his cap to those two out there in left center. So Bellevue West defense will all be in except Schneider at short who will play a double play setup. And it looks like they will keep Lester in this one. LB West bullpen, of course, still busy if needed. And fun situation here. Stanger gets it down. Throw over to third. Goes into left field. One run will come in. Will the winning run be able to come around third? They'll send him. And a walk off here for Miller South. A bunt and a throw goes into left field. And Miller South season continues. This one driven into right center field. Danny Spongberg coming on. It's going to get over his glove. Extra bases here for Luke Killinger. He's going to head to third. Two runs are going to come in on a two RBI stand up triple for Luke Killinger. And the Royal Blue Dogs take the lead back seven to six. Fleeman again still trying to adjust out of the first inning. He's been dominant all season. Red Raiders now maybe with a little bit more energy here trying to get to Fleeman's head a little bit. And if they don't get in his head, I'm sure that that one nothing run on the scoreboard will because the Filth Ballers aren't used to being down that much. Like we said, four and three in their last seven. But other than that, they've been dominant. And Fleeman bounces back nicely there. Fleeman gets his first strike out of the day up against Alex Martucci. Martucci, that's his ninth strikeout of the season. A, a team's second worst. And again, the struggles continue for him. Just two times, he, excuse me, four times he has reached base this season. Has not gathered a hit. And we'll see what the rest of this bottom of the order can do here for the Red Raiders. Big swing and a miss right there from Ben Harkin, the second baseman. Harkin, another guy that's really struggled to play one for 15 on the year. Does have three runs. But he's also got 10 strikeouts, even thing. more than Martucci does. And he's going up against C.J. Fleeman, who's one of the better strikeout artists in the league with 14. Yeah, Fleeman, even with the strikeouts and 14 of them, like you mentioned, he's kind of been a guy that has a lot of weak contact, almost an 80% weak contact percentage. That's incredible to think about of how well he's been able to get weak contacts. was a really big thought process with Corey Palmer, who we saw these last couple outings. That's been – the biggest thing for him as well for this Phil Thalar's pitching staff, but sometimes that's come back to bite him a little bit. He's gotten pieced up here and there. Mm-hmm, because even weak contact, if it's hit to the right gap, it can get through, and we've already seen that a couple times today with the singles from Wallen and Baker that led to that one nothing lead for the Red Raiders that we see right now. One-two pitch off speed, check swing, he did not go. And Fleeman with that. Talk about an 80% weak contact percentage, a 77% fly ball percentage. So he is really doing a good job of getting guys to just chip themselves underneath the ball and allow his outfielders to do the work. And they do a lot of good work, like you mentioned, the best fielding percentage in the league as well, just 10 errors. It's a team full of strengths, and even looking at their losses, it's difficult to find any weaknesses, but, like, the other teams, when they've won, when they've beaten the Phil Ballers, they have earned those victories. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for C.J. Fleeman. Able to set down Ben Harkin. The two guys most vulnerable to the strikeout go back-to-back -back up against Fleeman. Two gone here for the nine-hole hitter, Noah Triggs. The four-pitch mix has worked well for Fleeman. At least up here, it really seems like he's mainly been working the fast curve and slider. Haven't seen the change up too much, but 
I change it up. A little really more work like a two seam, just kind of change up that just dies to his arm side. Fastball in there for strike one to Noah Triggs. And Triggs less vulnerable to strikeouts. He's got nine on the year, a much better hitter than Martucci or Harkin. He's hitting 294 on the year. But like you said, it's that weak contact that can get him because Triggs d only has one extra base hit on the year. So if Lehman's able to induce him into just getting a bloop grounder or maybe a pop-up to shallow center or sa shallow left, then he's going to be able to get out of the inning anyway. Maybe less is separable, but still nine strikeouts, so not what you really want to see. 0-2 pitch. Strike three Ooh. on the off-speed. Just barely catches the outside. A beautiful bounce back inning for C.J. Fleeman. He strikes out three. And that will do it here in the top of the second. We head to the bottom of the inning. The footballers looking to find themselves back in the lead. A really, really good opening day for you to really be kind of the number one for this Red Raiders team. Six innings pitch, four strikeouts, only one walk in that one. I mean, how comfortable did you feel coming on that field opening day and knowing that you're the guy for this team so far? Well, honestly, it was just a blast to just go out there and throw. I mean, but for me, it was kind of weird because I hadn't started a game since my Legion senior summer because this year at Morris, I was a reliever primarily out of the bullpen. So it was kind of different just to how to prepare, but I was able to get the job done. So so being from Elkhorn, is it easier to be able to come here and place you know, somewhat in front of your hometown to, to, to an extent? Oh, yeah. This was definitely something that I wanted to do was come and play at home just so I could be home and to be able to work and hang out with my friends that I still have from high school and just be here in town. I love the city, so it's just awesome. What is your hope to be able to work here for the Corn Belt League? I know there's a lot of different motivations to be able to be in, in any kind of summer league. I think the biggest one is just to get better as a, as a player. Any specific things you're looking to work on? Mainly developing my pitches and just throwing harder. It's the biggest thing is just and being in town here. I know good strength guys, so I've been working out there and just developing my pitches to be more consistent and have better feel with them. So I think one of the biggest things in any college ball, really, where you're playing summer ball, where you're playing um, at, at the NCAA or, or NAIA level, um, is just being able to have those team chemistry. You're having so many guys from so many different places mm -hmm. trying to mix so quickly. Really, right. you've had about a week time to know these guys. Yeah. If you haven't known them already, um, what's it been like trying to, to, to been, bring in that team chemistry with the Red Raiders? Um, I think we've done a really good job so far. Everybody's getting along really well. We got our Snapchat group chat so we can communicate. We're all getting together to go hit. I don't go hit, but everybody else goes and hits. And so it's been it's been really good to just kind of get to know the guys and just gel in the dugout and everything like that. So so even though you, you talk about not being able to hit, or they're not ho at least hoping not to yeah. hit at this level. I mean, you know, pitchers who rake are one of the biggest things, at least one of the most fun things personally for me playing baseball. I'm a PO myself. Yeah. I don't hit. Yeah. I don't hit well. I, I, exactly. I, really, I, I, feel, I feel your pain. I feel your pain yeah. there. Um, do we get any kind of opportunity for a pitcher who rakes moment kind of opportunity here in the Cornwall League summer? I mean, we'll see what Coach Wilson's got for me, but if I do go up to the plate to hit, I'm taking hacks only. So, yeah. All right. So for you, I think one of the biggest things is um, really how long can we have these pitching staffs go throughout the rest of the season, right? I mean, it's a two-month-long season. You're really getting uh, one opportunity once every five to six days. You know, what is the recovery process like for you to make sure that your arm is healthy throughout the rest of the season? I think it's just really pitchers know their limits. Like, you, you know your arm, you know your body, and you know how to take care of it. So it's just kind of like – I'm doing all my recovery stuff every single day with my foam rolling and all that and stretching out and it's just knowing your body and knowing how far you can go and then pushing that. And, all right, so yeah. what for you, what was the biggest, was being home the biggest reason that you came here to the Corn Belt League or what, there's loads of different options for collegiate leagues. What helped you come here rather than anywhere else? I think it was definitely being home and just the opportunity to be able to play at some fields that I would played at like in high school and stuff like that and just be close to my family probably the biggest thing right. yeah you mentioned uh the difference between being a starter and a reliever what are some specifics of how you prepare for whether you're starting a game whether you're coming in relief what are some differences between the two well starting is can be a little easier sometimes because you know that you're throwing so you have more time to kind of prepare and you get like that extra hour or two to really get dialed in whereas relieving you're kind of sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, and then you get the call, and then you're you're going and you're gearing up really fast. So I think it's kind of good to be able to do both because I, I think that would show, like, versatility. But, yeah. 
So I think kind of with that, I mean, as a pitcher, the, the mental game is just such a huge yeah. thing, at least for, for me myself. You know, coming in as a reliever, you kind of have to, to, to be that different kind of look from, from whatever mm-hmm. your starting pitcher is, you know, kind of the opposite way as a starting pitcher. You know, what is your mentality going in there as a reliever, knowing, you know, do I want to throw junk first or do you want to still attack fastball early? My, my mentality is just attack always, whether it's a fastball or off speed or whatever, just always go get that first pitch strike. And just leave your leave your hitters off balance. Just attack because it's you versus me, and I'm better. And that's oh, that's always my mentality when I go up to the mound. So. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome back here on Around the Corner. I'm here with our pitcher of the week, Justin Drury. You had the incredible night up against the Rail Riders. Five innings pitch, just one walk, four strikeouts. And I think the biggest thing for you was how well you were able to get in battle and have weak contact, uh, Justin. And I think that's been the biggest thing for the entire pitching staff for you guys this season. Between you, C.J. Fleeman, Corey Palmer, all of you guys have done a really good job of allowing your defense to make plays. What's been the mindset for you? Um, I really just go out there and, you know, I push the motto of see how far the guy can hit the ball, really. And it's like... It's a matter of, you know, if he makes good contact, he makes good contact. You know, oh, well, if he does, you just move on and try to get the next out. So for you, you've kind of been, I mean, you can arguably say there's been three guys that have really been able to be an, an anchor for, for this entire pitching staff, but I think you've been the most consistent we've seen in this season, 25 strikeouts and 20 innings pitch so far this year. I mean, what's it been like for you to not only know that you can be the number one, but have trust there's other guys available if you might not have your day? Um, I mean, you know, we all go out there and we just do our stuff. And, you know, with us leading the league and, you know, most of the stats and, you know, wins, you know, we all just go out there with the mindset of, you know, we're the best team. We're going to go out there, do what we do. And, you know, if we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. So going into that one, again, it's kind of a, a doubleheader day to where you, you know, have a first game, then you have another game right after that. The, the mindset pitching-wise can be different, right? You might have a little mm-hmm. more taxed arms. You know, what was the, the, the setup for you going into that game against the Rail Riders? Um, you know, I was it was really just go out there and, you know, do what I know and you know, I mean they put up let's see, the first inning, you know, at bases loaded and it was kinda like, okay, like I gotta like calm down, you know, reevaluate the situation and then, you know, from there I just went out there and just pounded the strike zone. So I think that's been the biggest thing for a lot of different uh, teams overall. The, the teams that really seem to give a lot of free bases have really struggled this year, and I think that's been really the opposite for the filth ballers mm-hmm. this year. I mean, you guys have just been able to consistently get outs when you need to and consistently find wins when you need to. I think that was the big thing in the second game, actually, in that doubleheader up against the Crop Dusters. What's been that like for you to just know every single time the goal is to win, and that's all? Um, I don't know, it's just it's super big, you know, being on a winning team and, you know, having guys on the defense that you can trust, you know. If I get a deep fly ball, I know, like, my outfielders are going to catch it, you know, with uh, Trevor being out there in center and then, you know, Brandon, Brandon Anderson being out there in right field, you know, they're coming really clutch on some hard plays. All right, so for you, we're kind of getting to the, the second half of this season. Definitely diff- some different looks, right, for you guys just kind of staying consistent at, at the top of the standings this season. What is kind of the goals for you for the second half? Um, you know, really just keep pitching better. I mean, you know, I've gone out there, had some good games in the past, but, you know, job's not done. You know, we got to keep going, get the W in the season. For you, I know I think a, a lot of different places or a lot of different players that come into this league, the, the main idea and, and some of all overall is just to get better, feel, feel more comfortable, make sure you're getting uh, consistent appearances. Is there anything specific you've been trying to work on this summer? Um, mainly just getting innings, you know, this was my like first year being an actual pitcher and so coming out here I felt like I, it would help me develop a little more and you know, I'd get more of the mindset of being a pitcher and then just go out there and fill up the strike zone throw strikes. So we talked again kind of how big the team has been for you guys this season, just so many guys been able to produce. I mean, you talk about that one, uh, that one against the Rail Riders, you have 17 runs of cushion behind you. I mean, how comfortable is it for you to know you can just kind of kind of play more smoothly when you have a lead like that? Yeah, I mean, at that point it was like, you know, if they score a run, oh well, like my guys are behind my back and they're going to be able to produce for us. So for this team, I think final thing to talk about here going forward for this group, you're trying to make sure that you can defend the, the title here in, in the Corn Belt League. What do you, as well as the rest of this team, have to do to defend that title? Just keep our heads down, you know, play with grit, you know, not let anybody else come out there and, you know, prove that they're better than us. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, of Our pitcher of the week, Justin Jury, will take a quick break. Here on Around the Corn, once we come back, Justin Jury's coach, one of the top teams that we've seen in the Corn Belt League in a long time, the Filth Ballers. 
Welcome back here. Two to nothing, our final. The Bombers take it down the Rail Riders in a pitcher's duel. Ten hits combined, but both starting pitchers had a fantastic day. And I am with our Kelly Supply Company player of the game in Zane Layden. Zane, seven innings pitch, 109 pitches, not a run across, nine strikeouts and just four hits. I think the biggest story of the day for you is how well you were able to just pitch out of so many really tough spots. How were you able to work so well in so many pressure situations? Yeah, like, great example, bases loaded, two outs. It was 3-2 count, I threw a slider. You just got to focus on your mechanics and just trust what you got. Just focus every single pitch. All right, this is the second time we've been able to see you up here today. Yeah. I think the depth of pitching has been a question for the Bombers, mm -hmm. but I think you as well as Adam Eggert have really really been the top uh, of this pitching staff and have really lived that very well. How's mm -hmm. that been for you? You know, it's, it's f fun knowing that you're one of the top guys and you got another great pitcher on this team and you just got to every time just try and do your best, give all your effort. So you mentioned you've had some issues with your UCL these past mm -hmm. couple of years. You go out and throw 109 pitches in 94-degree heat in a day like this. I know sometimes it's really easier to pitch in the heat, at least with your arm. Right. It feels a lot more loose. Oh, yeah. Was that kind of the story here today yeah, for you? Yeah, for sure. I, I've always been like, I like hot weather, pitching hot weather, rather than pitching in the spring because it's way colder. But, yeah, it's probably the most pitches I've thrown ever, honestly. All right, so for you, this team, this Bombers team overall, finally gets over the hump and you're above 500 now mm -hmm. at four and three. What's the emphasis going to this next week to continue this momentum going forward? Right, we just got to keep pitching well, try and get base hits, especially with runners on, and just keep doing that. All right, thank you yeah, so much, Zane. Appreciate it. Thank you, a guys. A big win here today for the Bombers. 2 nothing. our final once again, our Kelly Supply Company. Player of the game, Zane Layden, Kelly Supply Company, providing industrial maintenance, repair, and operating supply distribution since 1903. The Bombers win our first of two here today on Sunday. Another Father's Day matchup. We'll have the Royal Blue Dogs and the Crop Dusters right after this here on the Corn Belt League Network from Jaden Taylor, Ethan McCormick, everybody here on the Corn Belt League crew. We'll be back here in just about an hour.